Welcome back. This is the back nine of the 2021 European Disc Golf Championships moving day. And I'm joined here with Simon. We've been commentating the front nine where we saw Linus going hot start seven under through nine holes. But still, we have the Finnish leader, Niklas. I think it's a five, six strokes lead at the moment. Yeah, Niklas had one bad break on the front nine, one very short putt missed on hole nine. So, yeah, giving Linus at least a bit of a look there and giving us a chance, which I haven't been taking. I'm still struggling. I think I'm only 300 par right now. And Josef is also... Josef is playing all right. He's, he's hanging there, but Niklas, a very good start for the tournament 29 under Josef is at 23 under you're at 20 so you need to start making miracles right now my goal for the round was to reach 30 and Linus 23 under right there chasing Nicholas hole 10 this is the the another roller hole so basically we've seen now over the couple of days that many of you chose to go roller landing right here and then curving nicely onto the open green tricky hole to get but you kind of it's again all these par threes they're right there they're turnover shots a lot of them are turnover shots and there is no wind so basically this is a, a perfect weather Joseph with that very beat up roller disc and I think this line is good it's a little bit inside maybe he's on the edge of the circle yeah kind of flying past the basket there and I think he's just outside circle one but still a good shot and this is a great angle to see that actually Linus put that disc down like the first third of the hole and then it rolled like two thirds so yeah he threw a much more straight disc than than all of us were throwing because you can see he forced the angle the disc rolls way straighter doesn't fall right as fast and as hard and uh, Niklas is also throwing a, a very understable fairway driver and this has some speed so this needs to stop cruising and that was a pretty nice curl that's right next to Joseph's disc yes and there is another roller coming I'm pretty sure it's a fun shot, right? Very fun shot. Did you like this? No, again, I, I don't know if it was wind or what was going on, but I threw the exactly same line. Actually, that almost, you almost popped hit. into the basket. But no, you won't have that curl in, of course, 10 meters left of the basket, not right at the basket. Mm -hmm. So we're all, Niklas, Josef, and I are all faced with this putt right here. So this is a spin putt from outside the circle. And a little slow, low. Yep. Another par. The upper rim hitters. And this is also C2. Did, did it go through? Yep. And that angle, you couldn't really tell. It kind of looked like a missed putt, but it, it, was, it was in. Oh. Or it should have been in. So, Le Linus looks to have another sh stroke. Wow, solo birdie. Solo birdie on hole 10, that's unexpected. Well, he needs to make this four meter putt. I think the third time Linus had to wait a while to throw yeah. his tap and birdie. He's, it look easy. He's, yeah, he's making a score very quietly. Like, nothing spectacular, but very effective. Hole 11 is a long-ish par 
4, which is playing a little bit downhill, but not much. The basically, you need to get your drive up in the fairway in order to have probably a sidearm, even a roller approach to the green. Yeah, again, this hole opens up a lot. You, there's many options. You can go roller, roller and get a birdie. You can go backhand, forehand, get a birdie. You can even go backhand, backhand or forehand, forehand. It's pretty much player's choice. And I like this change. I think the par five was fun, but without those trees in the back there, it definitely had to get changed. And now this is a pretty tough par four to get. Linus put a lot of speed on that disc and that is a great shot. If you beat those hay rolls, I mean, this is the longest shot I've seen on this hole. Yeah, he didn't even throw that very hard, it seemed like, but just the perfect angle and I think the amount of spin he got on that disc, it was just cruising. Never wanted to get to the ground. And Joseph is lining up that hyzer flip again. I'm pretty sure that's a different disc than he threw round two. Is he getting around the tree? Yes. And that stake is 100 meters, so should be pretty good from there. A little bit breeze, just a tiny breeze. Yeah, we had a tiny headwind here. That's a low, low release from very uncharacteristic <laughs> miss. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't see that many times from Nicholas. He's having kind of a rough time. Two pars and a missed drive. And you going big, obviously. You want to go a little bit higher, turn over, and basically glide. But you didn't have the right angle. No, it was it was very close to being really good. But I definitely got the distance. I'm about 90 meters from the basket here. And being up left is actually not bad because it gives you a lot more room to play with on the upshot. Mm -hmm. So Niklas is 150 out around. So this this is a smash. He goes roller. Yeah, I was totally I expecting like this. to see the roller. And he goes inside that guardian tree. That's going to be a tricky part from long circle too. You do have some looks from down there. It's going to be a really low ceiling, so he's going to probably have to go to a knee and put a lot of spin and speed into that putt to get it to the basket. A flex sidearm. This is tracking well. That looks beautiful. Nice. Skip and roll and on the dance floor. That was an amazing shot. Putting it way off the angle and then it comes back perfectly. Perfect distance, perfect speed. But <clears throat> you're going to go like a hyzer type of sidearm. Oh, that's a wide. Yeah, I don't throw many forehands, so I don't fully trust my release point or angle. And I just pulled that one slightly left, <laughs> actually a lot left. And I went a bit long, which surprised me that I could throw a 100 meter forehand. That's not bad. Congrats. Thank you. This is actually a perfect spot. So you can actually go slower disc. And the main thing is that you don't want to go too inside because that's going to basically block you. So you're going to go a little bit more outside. Oh, wow. I'm surprised you went that low. Yeah, that was a... Well, it was a great execution. He made on. it work. Yep. So we have two long putts and a couple guys inside a circle. This is a nice look. So this is a knee from the knee. And he needs to spin it. This is almost the edge of circle two. Wow. <laughs> that's that's how you keep a demanding lead right there. Yeah, that was a part of the day. Wow, oh, we get a replay. Let's spin it back. Yes. Oh, just over the rim from the knee, low ceiling that. There's a reason he's 1,034 rated. We were watching that from outside the tree, so all we could see was that disc flying out, and we were all just, wow. Okay. And you need to make yours, right? <laughs> Ooh, little jumper. <laughs> just snuck it over the rim. I was just waiting for that to fall out, um, that, which is not the great mindset, but that was the mindset I was in, but it went in. I think that was your third outside the circle pot. 
Maybe. I wasn't keeping track. I was just trying not to completely fall apart. Mm -hmm. So we're going to actually see another star frame. If Alinas can hit the, the five meter putt. I have no doubts. Star frame on hole, on hole 11. That's, I want to say that's probably the only star frame all week on that hole. Okay. After a star frame, let's have the d most difficult hole on the course, hole 12. So there is a lot of troubles you can hit. For example, these early trees that pretty much, you know, you don't get birdie after hitting those. You need to land somewhere here in order to get your second shot through these gaps. There are a couple gaps that you can go over the OB pond into the sloped green. And we've seen heartbreakers on this hole. Yeah, yesterday's round we saw the nine. And one of the toughest parts about this hole actually was the backup we were dealing with because we were waiting on four cards on this tee pad. So it was over 30 minutes of sitting and waiting to throw this hole. So that made it definitely even more challenging than it already is. And Linus with a perfect turnover. Yes. He's a little bit inside, but as a backhand thrower, he can go and do kind of a an angled approach. Forced turnover with an overstable disc that flicks his back. He's and definitely in position. Yeah, and this is the roller play, right? I Yeah, he said he didn't really like it off the tee, but... I don't know what he was complaining about because it looked I perfect like it. to me. Yeah, I like it. Team Sweden in position. Okay, Niklas. Yeah, there was a 40-minute backup, unfortunately, because this is a very slow hole. So this is a crucial shot, and he goes very high. He almost hit that first tree on the left, actually. He barely missed it. Okay, and that's fading all the way, and that's kind of the in the middle of the fairway a little bit further away but the great line yeah he's going to be happy with that and it's definitely attackable from there we're going to see a backhand from you turnover and i would say quite similar to yesterday's round it's fading you hit the wall now you didn't so you're pretty similar shot how did i end up so close to that wall again and Next time we play here, if we ever play here again, that wall has to go somewhere else. <laughs> I've already yeah, decided. The earlier round you laid up, but but now you go. You have to go. Yeah, I'm behind. I'm behind it, so I can actually reach over it and actually just blast the driver at the green. I was super happy with my angle, but the line just a foot, a foot here, a foot there, and that's a way different result. But I mean. Maybe yeah. five out of ten shots get inbounds from back there. Yeah. Now you can see that this is also a little bit too high, but it went through those branches and hits the tree and gets the bad roll OB. So this is uh, another trouble. Yeah, just a, a kind of a bad break again. That was an okay shot, and he got unlucky, but he was inbounds on the on the good side. So. Oh. And Yusuf hit that one tree that you need to miss. And he actually went way right, but stayed safe. Yeah, he was safe by a foot. That's enough. Linus, great spot. He turns it over. This looks very good. Made this one look pretty simple. Yeah. This only 10% birdies on this hole. So you are now throwing your four shot, and it's also leaking left. It's uh, circles edge again. Yeah, I was, I was a bit deflated. So this is a, this is a tricky place because you don't want to go over the OB with those branches because there is nothing really you'd want to do. He, he has a, that flex sidearm game, so that could be the play. And that's the play. Wow, going way back door. Yeah, you can see on that left side, now on the right side of the picture, that OB is extending to the right. So there is like a little OB creek. And this is for par. 
and barely lead. short again. And this was actually Nicolas' first bogey of the tournament. That's a heartbreaker. Yeah. You 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 want to have a clean scorecard, but sometimes it's not possible. Most of the times. Oh, that's a misfire. Linus is gaining strokes right now. Yeah, this is actually going to be for a two-stroke swing for Linus to go 26 under and get within four. Actually, three, because Niklas is still... So there's a birdie for Linus. He's 10 under, 26 down. Oh, correct, correct. And Niklas is going to tap in his bogey, which is 29 under. So it's getting tighter. One thing I know about Niklas is that he doesn't really get unmotivated with the bogey. He just keeps going. And on hole 13, uh, it's a pretty wide shot. I, we've seen a lot of backhand slower discs to the green. 108 meters. This is a must birdie for these guys. I like all these must birdie par threes that I miss. <laughs> Linus is cruising, 12 holes, 10 under. The course record is actually shared by you and Eagle from the, the major tournament back in 2018 at 16 down. Obviously there's a one change on the par four to, from par five, but basically that's about it. And Linus is leaving that left short. Yeah, Linus was throwing a putter. And Joseph also throwing his putter that he's been throwing all rounds. This looks good. Does it have the distance? Yes. Yeah, that's a quality shot. Seven, eight meter zone, that's right where you want to be. A little downhill putt too, which makes the putt a bit easier. And Niklas with the mid-range quite wide line and this is going right and needs to stop right by the circle's edge you don't want you don't want to go too much right obviously because then you're blocked by those trees you have a mid-range two floating it in a similar line to Niklas but you didn't have the you have a different disc obviously but you didn't have that much kind of the it was a little bit softer shot yeah didn't quite turn it over again enough but I like to be on the high side of the basket there, and even though I have a 30-footer, it feels almost like a tap-in. Okay, this is a circle two-putt for Linus. Wow. Beautiful. I was watching that right from his back view, and it was just pitch perfect. He hasn't missed the putt, not from circle one or not from circle two today. And a nice birdie from Niklas. He needs to get that because he needs to stay with Linus right now. That was an important putt right there. And that was dead center. It's shaping up to be another star frame here. I think this is our fourth star frame of the round. And now Josef is taking more time. A little Barely. left side, but in. Good star frame. Good bounce back. Yeah, I actually noticed here that I was last on the tee pad since hole five. Wow. Because every hole I birdied, everyone birdied. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hole 14. This is a very birdieable hole, par four. Again, you need to just negotiate through these trees, maybe be on the more left side than this crown shot, so you can have a more open wide shot to the green. And this green is I would say one of the most easiest green because you're gonna go towards to the slope typically a high speed driver and even have that little skip to the basket and we have seen a lot of birdies here so i'm expecting that we're gonna see birdies coming up linus has has the arm to go around the corner yeah he's been looking in full control 
at this point, no one really expecting him to make any mistakes. And he hits the gap beautifully. Yes. And it's on the left side as well, which is the easier side to make that up shot. Yeah, that is the most level place to get the second shot. Josef has a sneaky distance. Yeah, he likes playing these little hyzer flip-ups to flat. And I feel like that's like almost like a European style of throwing distance shots. Just not as raw power, but just with the angle control and the knowing your discs perfectly. I love that style. Yep. And he's in a good spot. Yeah, Niklas is also throwing those kind of the flat hyzers. Obviously, you need to go straight quite a far away before before you can get around the corner and let the disc do the work. And he's right there where he needs to be. I'm expecting you to go a little bit more higher out and then maybe feeding to the left. Let's see. Yeah, that's kind of a pure hyzer. There it comes. And in a great position. Watching that hole, watching this hole, it just, it looks so easy. But playing it never feels that easy. Every time it feels like a bit stressful off the tee to actually make sure you hit that gap. Linus with the wide hyzer. This is probably a fairway driver. And skip nice curl down. right up to the bullseye. Probably yep. another tap and birdie. You're going to go more Spike Heiser style. You didn't like that. <laughs> this was actually the only throw I was really frustrated with all around up to this point because it felt so easy and I totally missed that. Well, you're inside the circle. Barely. Niklas, he's going a little bit more aggressive line. And he's level by at the basket. Also not as good as you probably envisioned him throwing that shot, but definitely definitely in the range. Yeah, fortunately it w didn't went past the wall because that would have been a little annoying putt. Tricky putt. And that was a birdie putt. Yep, got, uh, that's actually back-to-back -back birdies for me. Five under par, kind of a slow round, but still opportunities to finish strong. And Niklas needs to make this to stay in pace. Yes, birdie. I mean... One bogey, but he's still eight under the round. I mean, that bogey's accompanied by many, many birdies. Another birdie for Josef. He was happy with that. And then Linus typically putting padding the last. I think almost every, every hole, yeah, Linus is just absolute cruise control. And he's yeah, I was happy to see Josef play a bit better than round two. Oh, another star frame. Oh, Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> the excitement <laughs> is real. So funny. Yeah, 12 down, Linus through 14. He's having the round. Uh, hole 15, this is the, I would say, a very easy hole to miss because you need to have the right angle to match so you don't skip way to your left or then you don't turn it over to the right. You want to be somewhere here with a very good shot to, to have like an 80, 90 meter approach to the pin. And uh, we've seen Joseph the struggle on this hole earlier rounds. He's pulling it to left. We'll see if he makes the adjustment, but let's see first what Linus is having. He is, he has birdied 12 holes out of 14, which is pretty insane. Yeah, he's checking this tee pad because this was this the slickest tee pad we've been dealing with um, all tournament a bit. And he's pulling that over. And that might be a no zone. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's better than being way left because there is some sneaky gaps back there and there's definitely some room and different shots to work with. But of course, yeah, he's not super pleased with that. Yeah, we need to fix that T pad for tomorrow. And he's making the same mistake on this hole. I think he's had made it two times in a row. I would never know what that would feel like. <laughs> yeah, that's the place you don't want to get into because that's pretty much the the worst place on the drive, but we'll see how he gets out of there. I'm expecting Niklas to hit this line. And he did, he did, yes. He went kind of a close to that tree branch, but he is, and now you can see, he was a great shot, but it's still on the left side. Yeah, it, it was almost ideal. He just needed that bit more turn to it, and then it's perfect. But he's still in the fairway and definitely good. And you played this aggressive line by purpose? Um, half by purpose. Oh, I was I thought I got a bit more lucky there, but I actually ended up drifting a bit to the left. I was trying to throw that a bit further out to the right, of course. Because you went under the tree. I didn't trust the tee pad. Okay. So fortunately, Joseph has a wide open there, but it's a long sidearm. As you see, there's a hundred meter stake, so this is 130 and he turns it over that's a thrower that is a thrower yeah i mean still relatively easy to get to the par right so but obviously he lost his chances for the birdie so this is what linus has so he has oh he nothing. is in the dead zone yeah we we were all on the other side of the fairway so we never really see what he was looking at so he goes under the branch, around the tree, <laughs> and right by the basket. Wow. That was an amazing shot. We didn't really see his window, but that has, must have been small. Dang, putting in the work. So Niklas with the sidearm flex, flex shot, and he is pretty good at this, right? Wow, yeah, I was very surprised. I didn't understand why he just didn't throw a putter straight at it on, or on a little hyzer. But That's he went with a nice little overstable flickster. That's more style. It definitely had some style. And I'm here. I'm a bit... I have these branches to work with. I had to go around the first branch and then try to flip it up to flat. Which you didn't. And you Absolutely ended, didn't. Yeah. You ended up on the left side behind the tree, outside the circle, right? Outside the circle and in the bush, in the tree. Just not good in any way. Okay. Oh, uh, no. And this was, yeah, he left it short. It was a soft release. That was, that was a lazy throw. Yeah, these little twigs that, that I'm putting through are really annoying my line. No. <laughs> and that I almost wanted to sneak out also back door. But that, that was actually a pure hyzer putt. I aimed like almost a meter right of the basket. That was your fifth outside the circle putt. Fifth. Fifth? Yes. So this round could have been really bad. Yes. And that's L an air yeah. ball. Left side miss for Josef. He's still right there. I mean, this is an unfortunate bogey for him, but he's 24 under. He's still fighting for the you know lead card appearance for the final round. There are three ho more holes. And Linus with the... Almost like a miracle birdie from that position. Yeah, that was definitely the most the most he had to work for a birdie. And he's set up now real nicely to go into those last three holes. And Niklas is lifting that into the basket as expected. He's nine under at this point, having a good round. But obviously, Linus is catching up. Hole 16, this is, I would guess that... This par five, you want to go for the eagle because you're far back yeah. on the leaders. Uh, you're probably going to go to the roller, we'll see. But normal play is straight to the gap in this wide, wide open area. Then the second shot, you want to just pretty much bite as much distance as you can because it's very unlikely that nobody's going to get by the basket by two. So you're landing your second shot somewhere here to have a relatively or actually pretty simple birdie on this hole 
It's so long, it's 300 plus meters, and there is a lot of things around the way. But Linus... It's a very fair par 5. You can, even if you don't hit this first shot perfectly, you can still, you can still scramble to get a, get a birdie out of it. And that's a very nice shot. Yeah, whatever this disc is, probably like a straight to understable fairway driver, threw it on slight baby hyzer and just hit it absolutely dead center. And Nicholas is going straight shot. He's turning it over to that corner. So that needs to go through in order to get a chance. Well, we didn't see that, but he probably stuck on the tree by there. Yeah, he actually got knocked down pretty quick there, and he's in a not very favorable position. So you're thinking roller, right? I'm thinking... Wow, that was an aggressive line. <laughs> throw it as hard as I can. Did you see and that? And I perfectly squared that tiny little branch up and it bounced straight 90 degrees right into the stinging nettles. Huge bed of stinging nettles. I don't think anyone's ever been over there. Or at least I hope. And that was a late flip, which was very <laughs> expected and wanted. And Joseph has a good, good uh, spot for the second shot. Yeah, we're going to see soon where, where you landed. And this is like off the fa fairway. This is complete no man's land. This is even off the off the fairway. Where's your tilt? Exactly. No, I actually had a nice little roller gap here through the branches to try to get myself back onto the fairway. I'm surprised the cameras could even see where I was there. Did you jump over that branch? I think you did. There was a branch that you jumped over. It looked like, but yeah, you're back on the fairway. Back in the fairway, and with uh, a huge miracle shot, I can actually still get a chance to even get a birdie from there, which would be a crazy birdie. And Niklas is trying to get out of this corner, hits the branch, and I mean, he's still way on the right side, so there is an open fairway on the left side, but he needs to do something. And yes, Joseph beat the tree and he's fading left like he was yesterday there and there is actually a backdoor route through those trees but you need to go low and have something to skip to the basket so he has a chance for birdie but this is pretty much a perfect landing zone for Linus and now you can just unleash your disc turn it over let it glide and it's doing pretty well that yeah he acted like he didn't really like it but I didn't I didn't really th see anything wrong with that Maybe a bit too high. Maybe he wanted an eagle putt. Maybe. So this is a full send, right? Yeah, this is full send. Nothing r feels like it really matters anymore, so I'm just going to try. Give it some air, turn it over. Hopefully somehow hit the gap. You hit the gap, went past the f film guy. Oh, no skip. Yeah, that's a muddy part of the hole, so there is not really a, a good skip area to have, at least if you're going that high. But you're having a birdie look after yeah, all that. That. <laughs> that was a good shot. So Nicholas needs to turn this over hard, and that's what he does. But it's actually so overstable that it's fighting back. He hits the branch. He's still 60 meters out. Yeah, he has some work to do to scramble for par. And I was actually surprised he's another sidearm approach. We saw it on the last hole. This could be easily a putter approach backhand, but he's going for the sidearm. And it's a flex shot. And what do I, what you can say? I wonder what this that is, because that looks so overstable. That's some mid-range. And this is what Joseph has. So there are s definitely some gaps. Whole gaps to go. Oh, and he hits early branch. He was going right side and then tried to fade in and be potentially skip by the basket. And this is a routine, a little wide release from Linus, but he makes makes it work. So Linus 
putting for birdie, Niklas is putting for par. So there's an opportunity to get within two strokes. Oh yeah, another stroke swing. And this is a, a good sidearm approach by Josef. And now you're facing the long birdie look after that horrible kick on the tee. Let's make it six outside the circle putts. Womp. Thumbs up. No, not really. It's kind of a sarcastic thumbs up there. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Give it a chance. Mm -hmm. And Linus makes the birdie to go 13 under and 14 under the round. Still two holes to go. 14 under Ooh, par. that was a little high, <laughs> but in. So we have a match here. I mean, now Niklas and Linus has taken kind of a caution for the... the for you, I mean, Joseph and, and you are, you know, eight, seven strokes back, eight or nine strokes back. So Niklas and Linus are having the battle. We have two more holes and the next one is one of your favorite holes. <laughs> I mean, this was kind of my destiny hole back in the days. It's five years ago now, 2016, where I made the big comeback and a good throw an eagle here way up the hill. This plays way longer than 570 feet. It probably feels more like 800 feet. Two huge bombs to get to the basket. And the OB comes into play on the left side. And on the right side, there's heavy rough. Only 10 person birdies. Yeah, because a lot of people can't even reach it into. Yep. But Linus certainly can. And he has a nice, safe line right on the right side of the fairway where you want to be. You don't want to be you know, playing with that OB or into the bushes on the right. And Niklas, he must feel the pressure now because Linus has got the great round. Obviously, nothing really dramatic for Niklas. He is pretty much matching exactly what Linus had. Yeah, great shot. Keeping it all on the safe side, making sure you turn it over. Good power. But Linus has the momentum, and I'm just trying to. And this needs to turn over. No, that's tracking OB. Not good. I have to go. Also, I get to, I get pushed back 20 meters where I went OB, so I'm way, way down there. Mm -hmm. And Joseph is doing this uphill roller, which is pretty. Yeah, he showed us in round two. Interesting choice. And he turned it over a little bit too much. Well, he's still on the edge, so he can probably go from there. We'll see. But yeah, you're going back 20 meters. Oh, it's Joseph first. So it is. it looks here actually a little bit more difficult. You don't get much power from that stance when, when you're on that wide stand. And just to pitch up. And he actually misfires it to the right. So that is a very difficult spot because that tree is basically the ult a, ultimate guardian tree. It's a very wide and thick tree. Uh, this is a driver, right? Yeah, I'm full power throwing my FD, turning it over up the hill. And I got a bit lucky there to get through those thick leaves. Yeah. And I'm still in circle one there to have a chance to save a par. That's all you can wish. Then... You can see Niklas and Linus are right next to each other. That was a. It's very hard to get pin high. I mean, it's just so much uphill, and the run up is so much uphill that you really lose pretty much all your leg power. Linus is going also with the, I would say, mid range here, and he rips that, and that is. Pretty much pin, almost pin high. Beautiful Good shots. Shot. And this actually is a green that you can have a bad roll away. We saw one yesterday's round, so you don't want to kind of an, you want to have an easy putt. And there was a little window you saw for yeah, Joseph. Yeah, he perfectly. He's high side of the basket now. Also putting for par. Should be no problem. And this is for par save. Yep. You've been putting really well today. I mean, when, when you got to putt. Thank you. Niklas for birdie. Yep. 
it's in. He's 10 under, so this is a very solid round going on. Yeah, Niklas had a couple bad breaks, one missed short putt. But Linus has been just putting on the heat. He's 15 down through 17 holes. That is amazing. Without even making it look spectacular. Just straight up controlled disc golf. Oh, stay. Oh, good thing that didn't roll. Heartbreaker. He took his time, but... Strong side, speed out, almost. That's a very unfortunate bogey. And at this point, he was going to be on the lead card. Hey, this is a very exciting time at Discmania. What you see here is our new production facility where we are making our new Discmania originals for disc golfers around the world. Previously, production of Discmania originals were under the powers of others. That led us to a situation multiple times where we couldn't deliver what you wanted or needed. Well, that power is now in our own hands, and we want to share that power with you. Currently, this machine is dedicated to run as many P2s as you and the disc golf community want. I promise you, it won't stop until the demand is fully met. Okay, moving day, last hole of the day, hole 18, and we have a Linus show going on. Five, 15 under through 17 holes. And this is a quite birdable hole still. Love this finishing hole. It's a beautiful, picturesque downhill par three where you can throw a putter or you can throw a mid-range. Probably no one's gonna throw a driver on this hole because of the fast downhill slope but it is definitely kind of a nervy shot and a very, you gotta throw a perfect angle to get a chance to be in circle one. And let's see, this angle looks good. This is his favorite yellow putter mid-range and he's inside a circle, six meters to get 16 down. That's, that, that's close enough for comfort. And Niklas needs to match this, so this needs to fade back, and I think it will. Yeah. Yeah, that looked beautiful from the tee. These guys are matching each other. Yeah, it's, a, it's officially a two-horse race. They're ten strokes ahead of third place. And you go with the mid-range, but this is a, a missed release. This is sad in every way. Yeah, that leaves you out of the circle too. Very most likely you're going to go just to pitch to your par. And this wasn't your day today. No, not at all. Well, disc golf is sometimes like that. There is always another round. I need a good round to feel happy again. <laughs> and Joseph is doing pretty much the same mistake. High left, and that is kind of the no birdie zone from there. Uh, he's also having a lackluster-ish round, especially on the green. And But you're aiming for this. No. Of course, I was trying to make that. Mm -hmm. Anything goes. Well, it's been great to see this guy on the lead card for two rounds. He got the lead. He's been recognized now as a disc golf community. I mean... Coming to this tournament, I don't know even... Wow. wow. <laughs> that was in. It all counts. But, yeah, Niklas, leader in the clubhouse with 34 under. A very nice 11 down round, but it didn't look like a great round after this. Because we have Linus Carson putting for 16 under to I, tie, tie I the course record. I would call this a new course record. Yeah, this is a new course record because of the layout. And obviously he is in, gets the best upload of the day. He's two back after moving day. So he, he's really challenging Niklas. And you're finishing with your round six under. I mean, obviously we all know that you can do better. You're not happy. There is one more round. I'm, I'm sure that you bounce back. And uh, also, Joseph. 
a little bit disappointed at the end having that bogey on the second last hole and not converting this one but we've seen another round of great disc golf international level i want to thank you simon for commentating with me these days you have an early flight tomorrow so we we're going to have a new guy on the commentator booth to be tomorrow. determined to be determined yeah and thank you for watching this spin tv coverage from the 2021 european championships one round to go we're gonna see tomorrow who's go gonna be crowned the european champions leading at the moment it's a niklas antela from sweden <laughs> finland excuse me linus from sweden and jona heinanen made a great round on the moving day to get to the third place and jakub semerod the local favorite rounding up our final card all right good luck to everyone guys hope you enjoyed like and subscribe Thank you.